Kansas upsets Oklahoma 38-33. to They snap an 18-game losing streak to the Sooners. They improved to 6-2. and They're bowl eligible. Top 10 win for the first time in a long time for Kansas. Jason Mean, a couple of key interceptions, but he gets it done when it matters. And Kansas pulls out maybe what's going to be the upset of the day in college football in today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks. Your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Kansas wins 38-33 to over Oklahoma. What a victory for the Jayhawks in Lawrence on a rainy day. You had the rain delay and everything, and they come through in the end. This is Locked on Jayhawks. Thank you to everybody listening for each and every day. Thank you to all the everydayers out there. You can find our podcast anywhere you get any of your podcasts, and you can hit us up on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. On today's edition, we're talking recap. Kansas-Oklahoma, baby. Maybe 38-33 to get the Jayhawks bowl eligible, but that's what's interesting about this win. It makes it feel like there's so much more than bowl eligibility. Still, though, celebrate anytime you get bowl eligible. I remember, you know, Mac Brown with Texas used to say, even in years where they started 6-0 or they had national championship aspirations, they would still celebrate six wins because it is still a cool accomplishment, and don't let that get lost in all that uh, happened here. First of this episode of the show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase if you used game time to get into the KUOU game, you're probably pretty happy today. So do that with game time. Kansas wins 38-33. Um, and in a lot of ways, you know, they, they hung with Oklahoma. This Obviously, turnovers played a key part in it. But it wasn't the be-all, end-all. Like, I thought Kansas was going to have to win the turnover battle to win the game. They ended up even. So as much as Oklahoma probably comes away from the game and is like, well, this shouldn't have happened and we shouldn't have fumbled here or had this turnover here, Kansas had three turnovers too. They were even on turnovers, and Kansas found a way to win. I thought the weather was actually helpful for Kansas. I think Dylan Gabriel is not really a cold-weather quarterback, and that was helpful. But Kansas ended up with more first downs, 25-19. to 19. Both teams struggled on third down. Very much credit for the KU defense, who has struggled on uh, third down defense. But they held OU to 2 of 10 on third down. I think the rain probably helped with that. Dylan Gabriel throwing the ball. KU was only 4 of 14 on third down. OU has been great third down defense, but they converted when they needed to. The 2 of 3 on fourth down. Kansas came in 1 of 8 on fourth downs on the season. That was last in the Big 12. They converted more than that in this game, including the 4th and 6th at the end. Jason Bean to LJ Arnold, which that will be a Jason Bean goes down in history play for that throw in converting that and becoming a KU legend. KU yards Oklahoma 443 to 440. 218 to 171 passing. So you really held them in check passing the ball. They didn't try to pass a ton in the game. Uh, running the ball, you gave up more than you like. They came in as, as not a great running team, but 269 on the ground, more than you like. They had that stretch in the middle of the game. Where they kind of ran all over you. But at the beginning of the game, the end of the game, you came through with the stops running the football. You ran for 225 against a really good running defense, five and a half yards per carry. Again, you look back at the Oklahoma State game. That's kind of the uh, anomaly in terms of running the football. Oklahoma didn't play as clean of a game, way more penalties. Obviously, the three turnovers both ways, but what a win for Kansas this setup. And, and overall, it didn't – I guess the way I'm going with this, way of why I'm talking about all these stats, I don't normally do this, is this didn't feel like a fluky win. Like, yes, some weird things may have had to happen. And, yes, if you play 10 games and they're on neutral field as opposed to being at home, sure, Oklahoma probably wins more than they lose. But it's not a fluky win in the standpoint of like, oh, it took KU being plus – five and turnovers or took this weird Hail Mary thing to happen for them to win the game. You just won a game that was back and forth and you were fortunate to be at home and have probably weather that favored you. But this showed that Kansas is a really good football team. You know, if they lost this game, you would have been five and three losses, the Texas OU and Oklahoma state, which arguably would be the three best teams in the big 12. You would have easily been able to say, okay, but they're still a good team, right? They're still a good team. This will probably go to bowl game, win six or seven games, maybe get to eight wins. You win this game. Now you're going to be favored in your final four. I guess maybe not Kansas State. That one might be more of a coin flip, but you'll be favored in the other three. And I know I, this win is the elevation of the program. It's showing that you can punch up, that you can beat some of the top teams, that you can upset them if you're playing your good game. It shows that you can compete with the big boys. It shows that you're more than a six or seven win team, right? This is the types of games that, that you need to win if you want to be a true Big 12 title contender. And maybe they are. You know, maybe it's it's too soon to go back into that conversation, like take care of business at Iowa State next week, and, and then maybe we're talking. But you showed you can beat 
one of the top tier teams that's competing for a big 12 title. And then you now have the tiebreaker on them. Should it come to that? If you can get there, you're going to have to win at least nine games, maybe 10 to even have that conversation continue on. But um, unbelievably impressive performance today. And I mean, how about what Jason Bean did? That was the ultimate Jason Bean experience. Was it not? You have a couple of plays where you're like, Oh man. And are those mistakes going to cost you in the end? The first interception, I don't know, not totally his fault. It got tipped in the air. Then again, Probably not an advised throws, very tight coverage, and, and couldn't fit it in there. The second one was clearly, you know, not great. And uh, also, if they wouldn't have scored a touchdown or got the targeting call, which set a new set of downs, and they would have been stopped on fourth and goal instead of having a first and goal when he kind of slid short and ended up taking the targeting call, um, that would have been held against him. But he came through in the end. And that's been the thing with Jason Bean. That it's like with Jalen Daniels, you have this perfect, like, wonder child who's so unbelievably good. With Jason Bean, you have a really good quarterback overall. But it's just you have maybe a little bit more inconsistencies. And it didn't matter today. He has shown he has been good enough to win games. And you go back to the Oklahoma State game. He was good enough for you to win that game. Yes, the interceptions were costly and they hurt you. But Kansas couldn't run the ball in that game. Kansas had a bad defensive game. Kansas had special team struggles in that game. Well, this game, defense was much better. You know, 33 isn't that much of a difference in the 39 game to Oklahoma State. But when you factor in OU's offense and what they are, it is much better. Special teams, uh, you still had some gaffes here or there, but you also had some positives like recovering the fumble. And, uh, you know, with the, the running game, it was nighting from where it was in the Oklahoma State game. So you did enough there, and he came through in the key moments. And that's been the one thing that, that's kind of been held against was in the key moments, is he going to come through? Fourth and six, he came through to Lawrence Arnold, and Kansas ends up winning the game. Monumental victory. It gets them bowl eligible, as I said. Celebrate that. Kansas, you're going to go to another bowl game. But now you start to look beyond that. You start to look, again, go back to the Big 12 title comp, uh, conversation. You look to better bowl games, right? You look to being ranked again this week, which would be the third week, assuming you are ranked after this week, that you would be ranked on the season. You know, that would surpass where this is a monumental win for where the team goes this year. This is a monumental win for Lance Leipold as a head coach. This is a monumental win for Kansas as a program. This is a monumental win for recruiting whether it's the guys you currently have committed or the guys in the future to sell the plan and say, see, this is it. You know, Kansas has an unbelievable recruiting class coming in in 2024. They really do. If you would have come in this season and you would have gone three and nine or four and eight, which obviously not going to happen at this point and hasn't, you've surpassed that in a lot of ways. Do all those kids stay committed? I don't know. It, it's hard to know in college football. Things are finicky, right? You don't have to worry about that. And with a win like this, you are selling the vision, whether it's kids that you, you have committed, staying committed, kids in the future, kids in the class of 2025, 2026, you are showing them the And on top of it all, the nice cherry on top here is that Kansas wins a game with Oklahoma going to the SEC. And who knows the next time these two play each other? I don't know. Big 12 title game rematch. I'd be all for that, right? Um, that would be a, a good thing because that would mean you're there. But most likely, this will be the last time you play Oklahoma in a long time. They're not going to be chomping at the bit to schedule you they're going to be playing a really tough sec schedule so they're going to be looking for probably cupcakes in the non-con and maybe every so often the the marquee game against like an ohio state or michigan or something so it could be a while before you play them again pretty funny you get to send them off with a loss if this is the last time we see them play uh in football especially after that an 18 game winning streak which was the biggest of any team in the series and you go back to the 1984 win over number two oklahoma i was talking with david lawrence Seahawk radio network they did a great job on the call in the game by the way um and you know he was bringing that a game up to me all week long and uh, certainly enough, Kansas comes through with the win. All right, let's get to our goats of the game. Good goats, bad goats here. We'll get to what's next as well. Obviously, there was an interesting tidbit before the game with Jalen Daniels. He kind of warmed up. He was in pads. It sounds like he was available via emergency, which you started to wonder, is the emergency going to happen when Jason Bean took the targeting call? But uh, I don't know. It's 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 a great win here. And think about this. If, you know, if, if Jalen Daniels ends up coming, in there and finishes out the season like if Jason Bean if this was his last performance at KU which it might not be it probably odds would tell you not to bet on Jalen playing the rest of the way in every game um but that would be a pretty cool moment for him and you know for Jason Bean as scrutinized as he's been and, and we've scrutinized him here on the show too because some of the inconsistencies I do think it's probably been a little bit unfair and he's been held against a higher standard because of what Jalen Daniels has done um but beyond that to go from like where you finished last season on on the missed pass against Arkansas on the two-point conversion to having this moment, getting them bowl eligible, top 10 win. You'll never be able to take this away from him, and he'll uh, always have that in a legendary moment. We're going to continue on with those goats in just a moment here with Locked on Jayhawks. 
This episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Now time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Jason Bean delivering that pass to Lawrence Arnold on the fourth down and six, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. And, you know, just like Jason Bean came through in the clutch, Athletic Brewing Company will come through in the clutch, too. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, golden, sours, and more. You can find their non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off your first order online. That's code Locked On L O C K E D O N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has all your ticket hookups, and buying tickets to your favorite events should be easy. Probably was if you used it today, and hopefully you did if you were looking for tickets last minute to get into OU, and hopefully you had a great time. I mean, you would have, obviously, if you ordered with Game Time. And what's cool about Game Time, they have flash deals, last minute tickets. You can easily find and view your tickets from the area with images of your seat views. They also have the, you can switch to the stadium view to where you can uh, see like prices in every section. It's super fan friendly with Game Time. You get flash uh, exclusive deals for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, and and more and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference snag the tickets without the stress of game time download the game time app create an account use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem code locked on college for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets it's lowest price guaranteed Our goats of the game. Let's start with our good goats here. Jason Bean um, uh, in the clutch, I guess. Jason Bean in the fourth quarter. Now, I can't give it overall for the game. 15 of 32 for 218. No touchdowns, two picks. Those don't look great. Now, if you do that, the rushing yards, four for 62 and a touchdown. I'm not going to give him a bad one, clearly. Uh, but Jason Bean in the clutch. Jason Bean coming through. You have those questions. He comes through in the, in the clutch at the very end. Devin Neal gets a good goat. 25 carries, 112 yards and a touchdown. He was a... Uh, uh, a workhorse back. Daniel Highshaw gets one as well. 12 for 51 and two touchdowns. Honestly, Kansas rushing game as a whole, 41 for 225 and four touchdowns. But for Highshaw, such a cool moment, man. He's from Bixby, Oklahoma. For him to come through with those two touchdowns, the 50 yards battering ram. For Devin Neal, the local kid, to have this local win. They were interviewing him after the game. And, you know, in the interview, they're like, oh, you've never been alive to see Kansas beat Oklahoma in football. To have that moment, so cool, man. And, and for the local Lawrence kid, awesome stuff. Um, I thought from a receiving standpoint, you know, it, it's hard to pick one guy because nobody had more than three catches for a good goat here. Lawrence Arnold, though, with the big catch at the end there for 37 yards, I think uh, three catches for 79 in the game. He was big. Mason Fairchild obviously had the one drop, but outside of that was good. Three for 62. Um, so kind of just all around there with, with what you want to be asked for uh, in that room regard um cornell wheeler and jb brown had fumble recoveries they're probably good to bring up here i thought kenny logan pre- played a really good game 10 t- he, he probably if you asked him he would want he, he he'll probably be thinking of outside of the celebration like the one that he almost had on dylan gabriel that who knows what would have happened after that if you would have made that tackle on the stop but overall he made a lot of big tackles and even on tackles that he didn't make it led to quick tackles after that because he was able to slow him down so i thought he had a really good game austin booker had a big sack he had six tackles i thought he was really good cornell wheeler five tackles, two TFLs, and that fumble recovery that I think was the one on the special teams. Uh, Mello Dotson gets a good go. Uh, unfortunately, Mello had to deal in the end, though, had the big pick six, and you know that, that was kind of a game-changing play. Um, honestly, it was kind of a similar start to the BYU game. Like Kansas goes down against BYU, gets stopped on fourth down. Kansas goes, stop the, goes down on OU, gets stopped on fourth down, and then you get the Kobe Bryant, like, trip buck stick fumble recovery for a touchdown scoop and score on this one you get the stop on fourth down mellow dotson gets the pick six and, and a huge play in the game um so i mean lots of players you could pick for good goats and and i think you know we could probably give it to the the ku offensive line i mean that's a tough oklahoma defense to play they only had three tackles for loss did oklahoma zero sacks did the sooners now that's that's a bit of everyone like jason Dean has to scramble at times offensive play calling keeping them off note but Oklahoma is a multiple defense, so it is tough. The offensive line has to communicate. They have to point out where everything's going for. Honestly, the biggest go to the game probably is that offensive line. 
to help you score 38 points. Nobody had scored more than 30 on Oklahoma. Only two teams had scored more than 20. And you give up only three TFLs. You give up zero sacks. You allow your offense to run for over 200 yards. You keep Jason being clean in the key, the, the biggest moments of the game. Offensive line, probably the biggest good go to the game for KU football. Our bad goats here, I, I haven't seen some of the coverage numbers and, and some of that stuff so far. But honestly, like I coverage numbers probably gonna end up being pretty good. I know you gave up nine yards per attempt, but I don't know. In the key moments, you were good. You got an interception there. Bad goats probably run defense. You give up 55 for 269, five rushing touchdowns. Oh, you 10th in the Big 12 in yards per carry. So you still need to shore up the run defense overall. You've given up 200 plus rushing yards to all four of your Big 12 games. Overall, you didn't let it be like a takeover where they had 400 rushing yards, but still you'd like that number to be a little bit better in this game. So I guess that would get a bad goat here. Um, your own internal turnovers uh, would get a bad goat here because that almost ended up costing you the game with the two interceptions and, and the fumbled kick by Trevor Wilson. I think I'd probably give special teams a bad goat here. I mean, it's not like all the way bad. You have some positives. They had a couple decent kick returns from like Kenny Logan and Trevor Wilson, Seth Keller. Um, Keller did hit two field goals, two for two on PATs, uh, but both field goals were inside 30 yards. Damon Greaves had a couple good punts, like the 49 yard punt was good. So they did some good things on special teams. But a lot of times what can determine a good or bad day in special teams is just one mess up or maybe two. And in the case, it was two. Fumble by Trevor Wilson and the uh, missed field goal by Seth Keller. Or the, the blocked field goal, I guess, would be a better way of putting it for Seth Keller. Is a little bit of a worry, I guess, with uh, you know the, the amount that are getting blocked lately over the last like three weeks. That is a bit of a concern. But you had enough there. And I will say, I, I was talking with somebody you know, wondering about the game management decision for KU at the end because they score with what like 50 seconds left or something on the Devin Neal touchdown OU was letting them score at that point because KU was down one and hypothetically Kansas could have just basically like kneeled the ball out a couple times then kicked the field goal and ran the clock out or used up OU's timeout or whatever ran the clock down you know and and they could have just kicked the game winning field goal I think it was the right call for Kansas to score the touchdown, though, instead of kicking out. Maybe you could say, well, should they have like knelt the ball on first down and then tried on the next two downs? Well, maybe if they kneel the ball on first down at that point, OU is going, no, now we are going to try to uh, make a side. I, I don't know. It, it could have changed either way. But I think because you had you had the, the field goal blocked against Oklahoma State, you had the, the field goal with or the next the PAT blocked, and then the next PAT you had the muffed snap go down. You had like a, a blocked field goal. Um, was that against BYU or Oklahoma State along the way as well? You had the earlier field goal that Keller made where it felt like it like kind of barely went over the uprights. You had the blocked field goal in this game. I think it was smart for Kansas to actually score and not just be like, hey, they're letting us score. Let's slide it to one and kick a field goal to win. Because of the fact that you were down one and you've had some blocked field goal trouble and field goal issues here lately, I think it was the right call to score a touchdown. Ended up working in the end, uh, though OU did get dangerously close to scoring there in the final moments. We'll have our short-term and long-term takeaways and, and more deep dive into re-watching the game from KU Oklahoma on a later episode of Locked on Jayhawks this week. We're also going to have a uh, KU Illinois basketball recap coming later this week as well. But uh, let's talk about what's next coming up on the other side with Locked on Jayhawks. Before we do that, this episode of the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun you can have winning up to 25 times your money. And you can do it by picking up to six more or lesses on different things. You select at least two, you get up to at least six. I was in on Dylan Gabriel on the less on passing yards. Feel good there. I was on the more of Jason Bean passing yards, which hit on the final drive on that play to Lawrence Arnold. I was in on more on Devin Neal rushing yards. I was in on more on Mason Fairchild receiving yards. So we went four for four there with the big ones for KU football. Hopefully you got in on it with prize picks. You can do the same and pick your own for other college football games, NFL games, World Series. They've got all the sports on there, NBA, whatever you want. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prize prizepicks.com slash locked on college with code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100 prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy finishing things up what is next for the KU football team well we don't know the game time yet for Iowa State they did the flex scheduling thing so we'll know that tomorrow on Sunday for next Saturday's game and then on Monday we'll find out the time for the following game which would be their next home game against Texas Tech and now as far as Iowa State, Iowa State has turned into a good football team. So they lost early in the season to Iowa, and then they lost to uh, I, or, or, uh, Ohio. And the Ohio game was, was kind of the weird one where, if you remember, it looked like they made the field goal that would have ended up 
you know, making the game 10 to 10 instead of losing 10 to seven. So who knows? I, Ohio is a pretty good team too. Um, but yeah, that, that certainly makes you head scratch. And, and, and then you have the Matt Campbell, like run in thing with the fan, like yelling at him and stuff. But since then they have really picked it up since then 34 27 over Oklahoma state. They did lose by 30 to OU, but then a 13 point win to TCU 20 point win to Cincinnati. Um, as of time of recording this, they're, they're beating Baylor by a couple scores. We'll see where that one goes final and if they win or lose the game. But uh, Iowa State's a pretty good football team. You're playing them in Ames, tough place to play. That is not going to be a gimme. It'll be kind of a coin flip game, so a tough one. And we've seen Kansas has been a much different team at home than they have been on the road. This is a great opportunity for you to you know show out on the road uh, and play to your potential for the first time, but it's not going to be easy to do so. So uh, that'll be a fun one, though, either way. And now that Kansas is bowl eligible, there is a little bit of Outside of that, the question will be, what's up with Jalen Daniels? He warmed up before the game. There's the weird report, Brett McMurphy, where it was like, he's available in case of emergency, which my immediate reaction goes, okay, but if he's available at all, why would he just not play? Like, he's proven to be your best quarterback. If he's available, he plays. If he's not available, he doesn't. So I I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, Cole Ballard took the reps in pregame with two. So, I again, I, I guess maybe that was like in case of real emergency where it's just like, if the first two guys go out, we're just going to bring him in, and he's just going to, like, hand off every play. I don't know. I don't know how to totally do that. Didn't matter. Jason Bean got it done, and that's everything you need. But the fact that he was warming up, that he was dressed, shows you that he's progressing in the right way. Kind of makes me think he's going to be good to go for Iowa State, or if not, then Texas Tech the following game. Um, the fact that you won your sixth game, got to bowl eligibility, maybe it makes you more likely, and that Jason Bean got it done in the key moment, maybe it makes you more likely to, you know, kind of sit tight with it and say Jason Bean's our guy. But now that you beat OU – there's also more pressure in a certain like there's less pressure if you're viewing it as, OK, we made a bowl game. Everything's staring on top. There's more pressure if you're viewing this win now as, hey, we're big 12 title contenders. And to truly contend, you probably got to win out your final four games. And so having Jalen Daniels would help. But either way, it's a good problem to have because you feel like you have a big boost in momentum with Jason Bean and possibly Jalen Daniels coming back. Kansas beats Oklahoma. I'll say it one more time. Thirty eight to thirty three. What a win. Make sure you're checking out our podcast. You can. Find it wherever you get any of your podcasts. Like and subscribe to the show on our YouTube page. Very helpful on our end of things. Leave us a positive review if you could. Also very helpful. Thank you to everydayers out there. Again, we'll have a KU Illinois recap. We'll have more KU Oklahoma takeaways, previews for next week. Plenty of content coming at you here with Locked on Jayhawks. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. See you next time with Locked on Jayhawks.